For Snapback, the one I want to talk about is the Dwayne Wade situation. So Dwayne Wade's cousin was shot and killed by pushing her, uh, I think her baby in a stroller to like a daycare center or maybe she was, I, I'm not sure if she was pushing the baby to a daycare or if she was registering the child for school, something of that nature. Mm -hmm. But the cousin was shot and killed, her name was Nakia Aldridge. And Dwayne Wade posted to Twitter, he's, he said, four kids lost her mom for no reason, unreal, enough is enough. The interesting thing is the day before that he had given like a little talk on gun violence and things like that, especially pertaining to Chicago, you know, he's a Chicago native and now right. he's back playing for the Bulls, so he's like taking, you know, taking that cause upon himself. Yeah. Donald Trump says, Dwayne, Dwayne Wade's cousin was just shot and killed walking her baby in Chicago. Just what I've been saying, African Americans will vote Trump. That was his response to what happened. He made it about a voting situation. He By the way, he misspelled Dwayne's Wade name in the tweet. He's just such an that. idiot. <laughs> then he comes back hours later, probably after someone has advised him, like, you just don't do that. He's like, my condolences to Dwayne Wade and his family on the loss of Nakia Aldrich. They're in my thoughts and prayers. He this time he gets the spelling right. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So he had to be told to send condolences. Mm -hmm. And he saw this as an, an opportunity to, this, this, is, this, is, this is really sad, but this is the Republican version of minority outreach. And I, I don't, really? Yeah. Did you read that tweet again? What did he say? What did he say? Which one? The first one? The second. first one. Dwayne Wade's cousin was just shot and killed walking her baby in Chicago. Just what I've been saying. African Americans will vote Trump. Yes. You think that's his version of outreach? He believes that. He's not, we're not talking about a rational man. Okay. I think, I think he's just insulting us again. Like, yes, he's insulting us, but he doesn't see it as that. He believes, you know, when he says, what do you have to lose, black people? You know, you all live in these poor, uh, slum-ridden places. You education is education crap. Education is crap. We don't have jobs. We don't have jobs. That's his version of outreach. What do you have to lose? As far as I'm concerned, we both did not grow up in that environment, and a lot of black people that I know did not grow up in that environment, honestly. In the and even if you do grow up in that environment, that's not publicizing that as the reason why to vote for someone is not reason to vote for someone. Absolutely yeah. not. But they, they view us in this tiny little lens. And um, it, it's, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm so beyond tired of this, this rhetoric. And I don't think it's going to stop anytime soon. Uh, but I guess we can talk a little bit about. Um, well, I wanted to say also what Dwayne Wade said after that. Oh yeah, sure, finish, He finish. says the city of Chicago is hurting. We need more and more hands on deck. These young kids are screaming for help. Enough is enough. And this morning, they actually caught the two killers. Mm -hmm. um, it was two brothers, Darwin and Darren Sorrells, and they have a criminal record, and they basically have arrested them. And the reason why they were shooting was because there was a man who dropped off another woman in their neighborhood, and they didn't recognize the guy like as being from the area. So they were just going to kill him. That's, that's the, and maybe the story will change as more information comes out. Wow. But that's what the story is right now. It's kind of like someone that doesn't belong in your zone or your area of Chicago, and they're like, oh, no. And so the guy who they're shooting at gets away fine, and he goes and tells the police what happened. So that's how they were able to catch up with him, which I'm glad that, you know, because I know snitch policy is strong in Chicago, but I'm glad I it wasn't playing in a lot of situation. places, yeah, yeah. Um, honestly, I, it's, it's a problem that's still trying to be tackled, but when you, I think when you have, live in an area where there's so few resources, especially for kids, like, what do you do when school's out, first yeah. of all? Like, um, there's not a lot of places, there's almost no places that they can go to. No. Um, there's no little league and things like that. And you're surrounded by, honestly, like just urban decay. Yeah. Like the, the places that you live are, are substandard and not taken care of by slumlords that don't care. You are in a zone that's heavily policed, over-policed. Um, and, and then your safety is always in question when you walk outside. So I guess we can talk about what do you think is a solution to all the killings, especially in Chicago. Well, Chicago has record numbers right now. I was reading that um, if you look at the Iraq, the, the amount of soldiers that died in the Iraq war from it was like a time period, maybe 2000, I can't remember the numbers, but it's more people that have built, died in Chicago from 2012 to 2016 mm. versus almost the entire Iraq war. Wow. And I think that what we're seeing now is a change. I think, I mean, the numbers are going up, but I think that we're seeing more of like, 
I always feel like black people aren't going to solve this problem. Yeah. We don't have enough resources and we don't have the numbers. Right. We don't have the access like we should have. But you, I think we're seeing a change in white in white people, which I love. I see so many white people coming out in support of changing it and adding more recreational centers, adding more. Um, Chance the Rapper was saying like in his neighborhood, there was like this center where they would go in, they could record music for free. Like they built it in the library. I guess to play devil's advocate, though, um, I read um, that, you know, there's been a big push to get rid of welfare by mm -hmm. the Republican Party and they feel like it's a wasteful program or not really needed and a lot of takers are using you know their hard-earned American dollars but um, UNICEF you've heard of UNICEF mm -hmm. okay so they put out a report recently and they ranked all of the um, industrialized countries in the world and where they ranked on poverty mm -hmm. and out of 35 countries the United States ranked 34th out of 35th so we're literally almost dead last and particularly the poorest group of people in the United States are under 18 um, and black children are still four times as likely to end up or to live in poverty than their white counterparts. So they're saying that also from, I think it was like late 90s, maybe like 1997, the amount of, of I guess it's a cash benefits given out was like $12 million and now it's $4 million. So it's a drastic okay. cut. But at the same time, you're cutting all of these programs or these, this welfare system, but we are increasingly um, impoverished in like the lowest margins of our society. Yeah, I, so. I, I actually think that's an argument for the welfare system to change. I think, I, I don't think it, to me it's not that it should be cut, I think it should change. And what I mean by that is like, instead of just giving cash or, or I think you need to do more. Yeah. Um, I like how whites and celebrities and athletes are coming together to build centers in the inner cities. I like how they're building parks. I like how they're building recreational centers. I like how they're building these music studios. Yeah. Even if you don't become the next big rapper, it keeps you off the streets. Right. You know, it keeps you interested. I like how they're building poetry slam contests. Like they have actual buildings in certain cities where it's just for poetry slam contests. Okay. I like that and I wish that somehow our government could move from just sustaining a population to actually improving a population. Yeah, yeah. Don't don't hand someone a check but leave them in a situation where they can't where they still can't afford good food. Yeah. Or there's still no actual grocery stores in that neighborhood. Right. They still have you know, yeah, the people like to slam on the education system. Why is the education system so bad? Because the people who have the actual power aren't attending that school. Yeah. So make those schools accountable by almost kind of like, I think there should be a tax on people who go to private schools. This would hurt my family because I went to a private school, but I think you should pay for the private school and then still have to also pay your regular tax and pay another tax to the public school because that will motivate you from, that will, that will at least have you engaged with the public school in your neighborhood. Yeah. You know, all the complaining that we do about everything, I feel like the welfare system is an opportunity to change that. Maybe we should have some more accountability. You know, the whole no, no child left behind thing. My mom is an educator and she tells me all the time how you know that program really hurt poor black yeah. children. I think they, the nickname for that program was Every Child Left oh, Behind. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, my dad told me that. I didn't know that. Yeah. No, yeah. I, it should be. It, it was a running be. joke, yeah. Because to, to give a state test, what you have going on now in the schools is people teaching to state tests. Right. And that's not education. That's Can you memorize this information to get this, that, to make our school look good and yeah. so we don't lose our funding and accreditation? Exactly. So I, I think that yeah, welfare, welfare system did something like that. What about welfare system said, we're going to go into these, these really bad neighborhoods or these ghettos or these slums and we're going to clean them up. Why would they want to do that though? I feel like if you're just if you're really invested and you're really socially conscious, like everybody likes to throw around so that term. Somebody, you need to act like. Somebody it. said, and I've heard that, uh, this uttered by other people, but like when we say that the system is broken, it really isn't broken. Like the 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 decay of these areas, the instability. That wasn't. That's intentional. This yeah, isn't. Done by this the is. System. Yeah. So why are they going to come in and fix? It's not. A, it's not a, to me a complex solution. Like you have different domains. You have your educational domain. Like why is why is our educational system set up through the tax base? So that if you are in a lower socioeconomic level, your schools are always going to be crappy. Right. Um, that's not the case in the majority of countries. They don't do it like that. Public school is public school no matter where you go. You're right. Absolutely. Um, I and, think that goes back to race, actually. Oh, it does. It, it does. And um, I wanted to bring up the fact that you grew up in the mm -hmm. South. And I had read that the South has the highest concentration of private, private schools, schools yeah. Christian schools. And there is a, a racist origin behind that. And, yeah. uh, and it... And it I guess it leads to the fact that the South really didn't integrate the way that it's taught in the classrooms. So just in brief, because I know like history lessons, um, what happened was when the mandates came out that we had to have integration, especially in the South, a lot of white families, instead of sending their kids to public schools, they created private schools. And because race is tied to socioeconomic status in this country, it was quite easy to do that, to charge a fee that they knew black people couldn't afford, right. open up these Christian schools, these private schools that created this differential. So I remember you telling me that in your town, yeah. the the demographic population of your high school was almost completely black? Well, was it, it depends on which high school I went to. So okay. I went to two different ones, but the one I went to in ninth and 10th grade, yeah. it was 
99% black. But interesting, I remember we were talking about this. My dad went to the same, sort of the same one. They just renamed it a couple of times. Right. And he, I went to his class reunion with him. Yeah. And I was like, oh, wow, look at all these white people. Like, yeah. I was shocked. And he was like, yeah. And he was explaining to me, like, oh, when I was going to high school, it's kind of like the beginnings of, right. like, integration at the school. They hadn't so thought about how right. to get their kids out of this now integrated school. And then if you look at the uh, founding dates for, like, where I went to junior high, which was a Catholic, predominantly white school, um, they were all founded, like, right around the time of so, segregation. Yes. And, well, when segregation ended. And then if you, my dad and I, we always, well, my mom, too, because she's in education, we always talk. There's, like, 21, there's either 17 or 21 um, public schools in the town that I'm from, mm -hmm. including elementary and high schools. And... It's not a large town. Like, I'm not from, like, the biggest city in Mississippi, which still isn't large. Right. <laughs> um, but if you count up, like, the private schools, and I'm just thinking off the top of my head, I can count five or six off the top of my head. And if you look at them, a lot of them that go to the private schools are pretty much predominantly white. Yep. And I remember asking my dad, but how can they all afford this? Every white person can't be rich. Yeah. Like, how can they all afford this? And he told me, he was like, they are willing to pay their last penny and dollar to not be around you. Like, that is the extreme that they will go to yeah. to separate themselves from you. I'm like, but so-and-so's dad works at the gas station. He's a gas attendant. But he sits in private school with me and wears the uniform and everything. Like, how can they afford this? Yeah. You just you just pay your last penny and dollar. And maybe right. I wish we could have the attitude, too. But at the same time, it's a little different because you still might have someone in your family that's a source of wealth that yeah. might help you with this or that. But I like your idea, though, to, like... Um, prevent that behavior from happening to tax people yeah. who choose to go to private schools. But instead, they, they reward you because of the voucher system. Yeah. Like, you can literally take a voucher to your private school that you want to attend, which means they take money out of the public school. They sure do. And that means you don't have to pay to go to the private school. All you have to do is show that the public school is not doing what it should be yeah. doing. Yeah, but then it hurts the public school right. even more, and there's even it, it just huge separation resource-wise. So, yeah, we first talked about Dwayne Wade, know, and now we're talking about the education system, but it's all tied together. Yeah. Like, you can't just talk about black-on-black -black violence without talking about how we got to this point and how we're still here and how America still thinks it's okay not to, not to resolve all of the uh, systemic uh, discrimination or just, uh, the systemic discriminatory policies that have caused this situation to be what it is. Well, do you think that this conversation takes away from the Black Lives Matter movement? Um, I think not for black people because we are more inherently aware of all of these social policies because we are honestly survivors of them. Our families are. That's our legacy. Our legacy is living in a world where it's the haves and have nots. But I think for most white people, especially the ones I've come across, even in my own school, did not believe me when I said that, our, that there was segregation. Like, I've actually had a couple people in my class, yes, I gave them that look too, um, Wait, it's not did not believe that, this no, this is now, very much now, in our 20s, grown oh people, um, not believing that uh, uh, there were, yeah, there was segregation, or that not believing that black people were not allowed to attend predominantly white colleges ever, Have that it was our choice. Book? That no, clearly not. But what are they teaching in just regular? I do not like, know. I history. do not know. But I was so completely baffled. And unfortunately, this is not an uncommon occurrence. So I'm like, if you I'm if now. you are an educated person, to me, I'm if scared. you if you've reached medical school, you've gone through a lot of stuff. I'm scared. You've gone through a lot of things. So if 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 that's the rhetoric that comes out of your mouth, I can't imagine a white American that has not been uh, through that rigorous education and ex exposure what they think. So, I'm just trying to figure out how they can come to that conclusion. I don't know. That there was never... But didn't, did not believe me. Did not so, believe me. So what me. did they say when you were like, no, this is a thing? What did they? What was their response? I just don't believe you. Yeah, exactly. Oh, wow. That's exactly what they said. And I asked them, have you ever heard of what an HBCU is? And they're like, oh, I heard about that recently, but you know, I can don't, see that. don't, I can don't see you that think now. that's racist? And I'm like, that, what's racist? They're like, well, a school just for black people. Oh, so that's how the conversation came up. No, no, it didn't come up. It like segued into yeah. that. But... Uh, it was so maybe so maybe they were just I, I feel like a lot of people do this I feel like a lot of times people just justify things with ignorance yeah maybe that person knows good and well there was people segregation. people oh, the people know good and well there was segregation but if you pretend like you don't know you're just you know offended by the idea of an HBCU school just for black people you're like well what if we had white only but I've actually brought up the HBCU like oh, situation okay. so okay. I think they legitimately did not believe it and nobody spoke out you know I was once again in the island by myself so it was really fun times no I just probably would let that go I, I don't, I, you know how I, I do educate, I love educating, but there's sometimes when, when I'm, I have to start with something. <laughs> yeah, you know? no, right, that's right, right, right. Too much for me to educate. But you know, I'm very lenient. That was the last thing that I said, and I realized, um, uh, the, Do you look at that person, or do you look at people differently who make comments like that to you? Honestly, I'm not surprised. I'm actually surprised if you have an educated answer and you're not black. To be honest, yes, I do. Really? Yeah, I do. To segregation existing? To a lot, I've heard some of the stupidest comments in the past couple years, just unfathomable, like how you could think, and so have you. I, I, I know, but not just 
fundamentally wrong. I've heard you would be su- you should, you'd be like surprised. I've even had um, people that I've worked with that were in their 50s and 60s that grew up under segregation and did not realize that black people had to drink at different water fountains, had to use separate bathrooms, had to go to separate restaurants. Do you think they're lying though, or do you think they're honest? She, well, this particular person came up to me and she's like, oh my God, I did not know. I've been taking this class on the 50s and 60s and I've been learning about segregation. And I'm like, but you lived in the South, not in the South, you lived in Ohio and Ohio may not have had the rigid Jim Crow laws, but they definitely did have segregation. They definitely did have the whites and blacks only signs. So for you to- That's kind of similar to, I had a, I had a physician tell me one day that um, I, had, I have two different physicians. One told me that being as a poor white girl, that's equivalent to being a, a black girl from down South. A poor white girl from Ohio. She described herself as a poor white girl from Ohio. She's like, it's a very industrial kind of city. And she's like, I feel like I can relate to you because it's the same as being a black girl from Mississippi. I think I told you this. You did. And I was just like. And I remember looking at you like. I remember asking you because I'm not from Ohio. I was like, is Ohio that bad? (laughs) Is it just that bad? Because I'm not from Ohio, but I know how Mississippi is. And it's a poor state in general. And I know how poor white people are treated. I know how black people, not even poor black, black people are treated in Mississippi. And it's completely different. There, it's the same in Ohio. I mean, yes, we have a, a poor segment of the white population because we have a large part of Appalachia mm-hmm. in, Ohio, in Ohio. And it's very rural and um, there's a lack of opportunities. But at the end of the day, you're still white. <laughs> like, it doesn't matter where we go in the United yeah. States or really anywhere that was a colonized place in this world. Like, but you, she genuinely, she asked me what I thought about that. This was like a kind of a formal conversation. So and I unfortunately, you it. can't even yeah. tell the truth. You yeah, can't say, to, you can't. Yeah. I just had to be like. That's a trap question. I was like, that's an interesting perspective. I'm going to use that's, that that's from now on. I'm going to use that. I didn't know what else to say. I'm going to use then, that. 